Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday early evening, late afternoon here along the West Coast, 5 o'clock in the p.m., December 7, 2025. Uh, got a 5.8 earthquake coming up here into the Alaska area. This is uh, the largest aftershock so far from the seven-pointer that stirred up here yesterday. Uh, I was looking for, you know, at least one six-pointer. That didn't quite make it up into the six magnitude, uh, magnitude range, but pretty close. Uh, so there's a 5.8, pretty shallow, about three miles deep or so around the area where the seven-pointer struck yesterday. So that brings up the total tally of fives now up to six. We got six five-pointers. Still waiting on one six-pointer. A uh, good possibility we could see that. There's the uh, seismograph stations there picking up that... Uh, upper five let's go see what we got here see if this has been reviewed or not it's still underneath automatic status so this could get revised here to a uh, most likely a larger magnitude I don't think it's gonna go smaller uh, let's see what we got well at least one station there up in the low six range so this varies uh, basically what happens is it picks up a number of station magnitudes here that are being spit out when there's an earthquake and it averages them out in terms of uh, the appropriate magnitude here um, so we it could get revised I was just looking at the uh, seismograph stations here and uh, it is showing up quite nicely in the Northern California uh, it is being picked up there in Southern California as well in the Anza area there it is on the Alaska station there, and also uh, Glacier Island picking that up as well. Uh, Bessie Mountain. Bessie Mountain up there in Alaska. That's picking that uh, station or the uh, earthquake up as well. So uh, we'll have to see what these guys want to do with the magnitude. It could get upgraded a little bit. Like I say, we normally see at least one six-pointer, at least one, um, from a 7.0 earthquake we start seeing you know multiple sixes and, and then close to the main magnitude then that's a bad sign that something bigger is brewing but uh, specifically in this area I don't think so because of the strike slip boundary but then again it occurred <coughs> off of it in kind of a thrust area so uh, we'll have to watch these magnitudes and uh, see where it goes see where it leads us to <coughs> excuse me uh, 5.8 still let me refresh this, make sure we got the latest data. What's the EMSC reporting out here? Man, look at all that earthquake activity. Just a, look, I can't even, I, I literally have to have the globe like that for you guys to see all the earthquakes that have struck out here. <coughs> and that's just, man, that is just uh, in the last 24 hours. It's been about 30 hours now since the, uh, the, the seven pointer. So let's get a total tally here in terms of uh, what's taken place here almost 200 earthquakes um, also some nearby earthquake activity as well that's been happening out here uh, this was uh, after the main quake we're starting to notice some uh, some earthquake activity there is a handful of quakes here that was previous uh, to the seven pointer uh, but we did have some uh, some newer activity up here away from the seven pointer and that can happen you know when you get the adjustment there along a plate boundary or in a fault system that does further uh, can, can have adverse effects there kind of like a domino effect on nearby faults so we did notice a little bit of pressurization increasing out here along this area that's why I said uh, earlier in the update we may want to watch this area back here just because the way this horseshoe type um, plate boundary is uh, set up most of the time if you fill in one area you, you'll expect to fill in the other area due to the the direction of the the uh, plate stress out here similar down to the uh, you know the South Sandwich Trench way down here uh, we've got one earthquake out here in the last week but if you go back the last 30 days or so um, we've not going to show it on this map but we have seen swarms up here of decent magnitudes and then we'll have swarms down here across that subduction zone and then eventually it fills in across the middle. Similar, I think we may see a similar event up here, just the way that the this area is absent of decent movement here recently. And I'm sure the stress is on. 
uh, with this latest quake in the area. Has it been reviewed? It's still underneath automatic status. All right. So, uh, yeah, so he showed up there, Southern California. Not a big signal. Petrolia picked it up a little bit more. Of course, Northern California is closer to Alaska, right? Uh, let's check out space weather activity here real quick, and then we'll check back on the verification of that magnitude. Uh, looks like tomorrow night got a decent chance here. It's going to be Monday night of seeing a G3 class storm. This is only showing a G2, but we are expecting KP index up around the 7 range, which would ramp up uh, the G3 scale there. So that would bring down the view line of the auroras tomorrow, a little bit more down the central Oregon area, maybe down into Nebraska a little bit further. Uh, but we'll have to watch that. A decent storm uh, is expected there around. Looks like it's going to begin around 00 uh, to 0300 tomorrow on the 9th. So right now, you know, in comparison here, it's the 8th UTC time at uh, uh, 0110. So technically this time tomorrow night and then early possibly Tuesday morning could get a decent show here uh, as far as the aurora activity goes. Definitely uh, keep your eyes open if you are an aurora fan. Uh, there's a, looks like we had a little M flare here kicking up roughly about the same time as that 5.8 struck. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't know. Because yesterday, when the seven-pointer struck, we were like right in the middle of a flare, an M flare. So here we are a day later, another, not a big M flare, but a decent one, and I'm sure it's earth-directed. Uh, it's coming off of that same sunspot there. It looks like it's starting to go down a little bit, uh, but I'm pretty certain that's the region. Let's see here. Yeah, oh, well, 4294 here. It was 42.99 and 42.94, so 42.99, 42.94. Watch this area down here. It's a massive area, right? And we've been watching it, but it's just sitting there, front and center stage, looking all nice and complex. Didn't it hasn't really thrown off any major solar flare activity. As soon as it gets over here across the southwestern limb, watch it pop a big X flare. Never fails. But anyway, let's go check back here at this earthquake and see what they're reporting up here. Still a still a 5.8. Automatic status still. So it is the weekend. It took them, oh man, I don't know. It took them about 15, 20 minutes or so yesterday following that seven pointer um, to up to uh, adjust that magnitude there or to verify it at least. Let's go over to the Tsunami Warning Center. Sometimes they put out uh, uh, the earthquake magnitudes out here as well. These guys reporting it as a 5.7. Uh, either way, this would be the largest aftershock here from the seven pointer in Alaska, where we got uh, minus, you know, minus a couple of these smaller quakes here uh, from the past week before this activity. You know, we're closing in here on close to 200 earthquakes. Almost 200 aftershocks going on there from that seven pointer. And again, should expect at least one six pointer. Let's see, I got another notification here on my phone. Three pointer. <coughs> got another three pointer coming in there to the area. So, anyway, folks, um, we'll catch you out here a little bit later. Just want to jump in here and provide an update on this uh, 5.8, the largest aftershock so far uh, from this seven pointer.